Well done. You have successfully completed the City Girls International Spoken ESOL Teacher Workshop with a focus on range. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And I hope you also noticed that the tasks and activities that you successfully performed are exactly the ones that you can take into your classroom. If you found them enjoyable, some of the games and some of the activities, so will your learners. And I think that that is the most important thing when it comes to developing range, that learners have got to want to do it. One of the features of spoken production and spoken interaction is that it's all too easy to limit the range of language you use because in some ways it's quite natural. You don't always need to use a wide range. Well, what we did in the tasks in the workshop was to give you scenarios, settings where you can't really not use a wide range. And that's very much what we'd like to see you do in the classroom because that will have a very positive effect on performance in the test itself. Range is not just vocabulary. Think back to the workshop. We looked at this and many learners think that range is only how many words you know. It isn't. Range is how many words you know and use appropriately. Range is also a range of language structures. Range is also very important in a spoken ESOL test. Range is also functional language. Do we use an appropriate range of language exponents? Exponents of apologising, complaining, criticising, complimenting. Our role as teacher is to give learners the opportunity but also the need to use a wide range of language. I've said with the other subskills components of the spoken ESOL test that what we need to do is to focus on ourselves as teachers and look at what roles we play. And when it comes to range, we are very much a model. Our learners aspire to do what we can do. Think back over some of the tasks. It takes years. It takes a lot of practice to build up to be able to do these things with ease. And that's what we can do as teachers. Specific ideas for range? Well, <clears throat> you've got them in the teaching support materials. You've got them um, in the workshops themselves. But what I would say is... Get your learners to think of who the target listener is. When they're practicing in class, when they're practicing with colleagues, when they're practicing outside, get them to think very much. Who am I speaking to? What do I need to say? And how much language can I actually use? Games. Games seem to me to be a very successful way of developing range of language. And again, if you look back on the workshop, hope you enjoyed some of those games and activities. If it can be made fun, it will work. A teacher is also very much a motivator. I think learners respond very positively to being complimented on an ever-increasing range of language they use. And finally, let's not forget that the learners are candidates for an important test. And I think if we can get them not to worry too much about range in part one, in part one of the test, it's much more about giving an accurate answer with reasonable fluency. But by the time they build up to part four, by the time they've warmed up, they should be able to manage discourse. They've got time to prepare, they've got time to think about what they're going to say, as you did in the workshop, and it will come naturally to them to deliver a wider range. I think that is the extent of my range on this topic. Thank you very much. <laughs>